you got to reread that again, man. Was Christ poor his whole life? If Christ was poor his whole life, then Christ is a hypocrite. Because... Is this man preaching false doctrine? What is he talking about? And the thing that the Bible tells you will bring you good health, a long lasting life, wealth, financial resources, good relationships, favor with God, favor with man, good reputation with those with high positions of power and authority. What could that thing be? Well, the Bible calls it wisdom. But many times when you bring it up, Christians often think that when you say wisdom, that you're only talking about biblical head knowledge. That is not true. That wisdom is just biblical knowledge. And that even that's even in the Bible. But I always say this, people refuse to get wisdom. Because they think that you only need a little bit of wisdom. You know, just to make good decisions every now and then. But they do not understand the importance of wisdom. How important is wisdom in your life? What I'm saying is this. Wisdom, your life depends on it. Your life depends on wisdom. And that's in the Bible. But a Christian is not going to tell you that. All they're going to tell you is all you need is Jesus. Yes, all you need is Jesus so that you could be saved, but you need something else so that you can have a good, successful life, and that's wisdom. And even Jesus Christ himself had to get wisdom at the age of 12. He did not get wisdom just in the Bible. He got wisdom from other people. And then the Bible tells you that he, he had to grow in wisdom. Wait, I thought Jesus, isn't he God? He, he's supposed to be all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's God in the flesh. Jesus already knows everything. He doesn't need to get wisdom. He doesn't need knowledge. Doesn't he already know everything? Wait, if he already knew everything, why did he have to get knowledge? Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God. I'm asking you this question because I need you to think about it. Think about this for a moment. You've been taught that all you need is Jesus. Jesus doesn't even say, all you need is Jesus. You, you've been taught that Christ was all-knowing. He just knew everything when he was here. He already knew what his purpose was in life. He already knew what he had to do. If all that is true, then why did he have to get wisdom? That is automatically contradictory. Now, I always say Christians refuse to get wisdom. Because they don't think that it's important. You know, they, they'll, they'll pray for wisdom when it comes to making a job decision. Like, oh, God, you know, which job should I get? You know, or they'll pray a prayer like, uh, you're about to go get this job. And you apply. And then you say, God, just, just don't let it work if you don't want me to be here. Let your will be done. Okay, cool. That's a nice, sweet prayer. But King Solomon who was influenced by God, God gave him wisdom, says that you need to treat wisdom like it's a hidden treasure, like it's silver or gold buried. He says, in all you're getting in life, get wisdom. If you have to go broke to get wisdom, get wisdom. Wisdom can save your marriage. Wisdom can take you from being a poor man to financially stable to wealthy. Wisdom can bring you good health. Not like, oh, I got wisdom, all of a sudden I become healthy now. No. Wisdom allows you to make wise decisions when it comes to your health and your wealth and your relationships. Wisdom will allow you to raise your children the right way. You don't have to just guess. Your children don't just have to be rebellious. If you're wise and about in the way you raise your children, they will become godly individuals. If you're wise about how you handle your children. 
but a lot of people aren't wise on how they handle their children. So this is why the Bible has to warn us not to get angry with your kids and provoke your children to become angry. Because once you provoke them to become angry because you're angry, they rebel. Because anger implies that there's fear. And if you put fear into your children, they will want to rebel against you. And this is what happens with, when people come to God. When, they, when people are scared of God, they rebel against him. It's the same thing. So I say all these things because people think that just getting Jesus in your life, that's enough. They think, that, oh, that, that's all I need. That's all I need. No, it's not. Christ talked about the kingdom more than anything. And he even says that the children of this world are wiser than the children of the light. What does that mean to you? People in the world are wiser than God's own people. That is not a good sign. So how do you get wisdom? Well, the first thing the Bible tells you is to have a, a reverential fear of God. That's the beginning, it says. That's the beginning of wisdom. You got to recognize that wisdom comes from him. Meaning, you know, wisdom is rooted in truth. And if wisdom is rooted in truth, then that means ignorance is rooted in lies. The more wisdom you have, the more life is easy. But the more ignorant you are, the more difficult life is. So, when people ask me questions like, how much wisdom do you want? I'm like, dude, I want as much wisdom as possible. I want the wisdom of God. Because it's not an option. And that's what a lot of people think is it like, like, you know, they, 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 they treat they treat God and they treat the Bible like it's kind of like a game. Like, oh, you know, I want to be like David. That's my favorite person in the Bible. Or I like Samson. I, I, I like Samson. He was strong. Or I like this person. I, I just I want to be like Ruth or I want to be like Apostle Paul. And so that people kind of some, a lot, some Christians try to imitate certain people in the Bible rather than be their own individual person. And so they just imitate different things or they, 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 they copycat rather than allow God to give them wisdom so that they can be their own individual person. Whatever you have been called to do in your life is going to require wisdom. I say require, that's a key word, required. You cannot fulfill your purpose in life unless you have wisdom. It will never happen. So... Christ himself could not go and die on the cross for our sins and all this good juicy stuff unless he was a wise man and he knew what he had to do in every single moment of every single situation of the day. He had to be wise. And so if pe people always say, you know, Christ was, he was living in poverty. Yeah, the Bible tells you that, you know, he became poor that we might become rich. But you got to reread that again, man. Was Christ poor his whole life? Or was it just around the time when he was about to die on the cross for our sins? If Christ was poor his whole life, then Christ is a hypocrite. Because that means if he was in poverty, he didn't apply the book of Proverbs to his life. If Christ was a poor man walking around, then that means he didn't apply wisdom to his own life. On how to handle his finances. He came to fulfill the old law. He came to fulfill it. And now I'm not saying that, you know, Proverbs, that's the old law. But what I'm saying is, Proverbs is not a thing that you just look at and then you just throw it to the side like, oh, that's a good little nugget of truth for the day. No, it's a daily application. That's why I believe that there's 30 chapters in Proverbs for every day of the month. 30 days. 30 chapters so it's so powerful and i say all this to encourage you so that you can get wisdom but you got to see the consequences of not having wisdom the consequences of ignorance you know just default if you're an ignorant person your life is like i said in the beginning the world's headed to hell in a handbasket if you're an ignorant person you're going to make ignorant decisions 
you will you will make unintelligent decisions in all things in life without wisdom you will be a double-minded person you will not know what decisions to make in life you'll want to do this and you want to do that and you'll test this and you'll try that and you'll spend your money on that you'll hook up with this girl or guy you know you go to the club you'll the, when the bible says someone who does not have wisdom another reason why it's a requirement in your life to have wisdom because it without it the bible calls you a fool and then the bible tells other people to stay away from fools so in other words if you're a fool if you're an ignorant person god would tell other people to stay away from you and i and i and i and i and i'm not i'm not talking about you i'm talking about the other person who's watching this video not not you the other the other viewer who that was watching but i say this because pe people don't think people think that they're special like god is just just they god treats them like they're special like they don't have to apply biblical principles to their own life like they can just kind of override the system and no nah. wisdom is like god's automation system you know when you apply wisdom to your life when you apply principles the result is automatic just like planting a seed in the ground and watering it and nurturing it the principle is is that it will grow if it's planted in good soil it's a principle it's default it, 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 it cannot be a faulty the, the seed cannot be a faulty thing but if you if you try to plant the seed on the concrete it's just not going to work you plant the seed in bad soil is just not going to work it's just default it's been programmed to operate a certain way and so human beings your mind is like a seed it needs to be nurtured. It needs to be planted in good ground, in good soil, your mind. It needs to be nurtured with the right things. And the only way you can nurture your mind is with, by in, investing wisdom into it. Nurturing it with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding. And not just reading the Bible. Oh, you got to read books outside of the Bible. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know that. You're a little bit too religious. I know. I, I get you. I get you. I, I said you, you got to read a book outside of the Bible. You know, it's, it's, you're probably thinking that's a sin. You know, so that'll probably be another thing that we'll have to get into another time. Like, wait, wait, you're telling me that it's okay to read books outside of the Bible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why you're so confused in your Christian walk is because all you read is the Bible. <laughs> I I gotta go. Just, uh, just hit the subscribe button, hit like, comment. I gotta get out of here. I, I I probably said too much. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs>